Redditors who are not in love with their significant others, why are you still with them? Throw away. I honestly don't know, because it's been more than 25 years and it's just easier to live as roommates than to go my own way, even though in a lot of ways that would be easier. Additionally, she would be royally effed in so many ways. No real income, no place to really go. She wouldn't be able to afford a nice place. I'd be perfectly fine, but she'd be in a world of hurt. I don't necessarily love her, but I don't hate her enough to do that to her. So I stay. Same position, I rented him a place for a year, paid all the utilities and hookups and told him you have a year to figure shit out. Zero regrets. I literally bought my freedom and lack of guilty conscience. Just a thought if you really want to move forward. From my sister-in-law, if I leave, I'm the perpetrator, breaking up a marriage, wrecking a home, etc. and hurting and humiliating my kids, my parents, my in-laws, but if I stay, I'm a victim, victim of my miserable husband and everyone wants to help victims. Edit, thank you for the word, kind stranger. She's not wrong, I left, and I am now the bad guy and everything gets blamed on me. People can treat me however they want to, because ultimately it's my own fault for, for breaking up my marriage. Mostly, this is my immediate family I'm talking about, and my ex. I mean, I do stand up for myself, but I can't control other people. We have a special needs daughter who doesn't talk until she's able to tell me that something happened and she can understand more complex ideas and situations. There's no way I'm putting her in someone else's hands. My husband and I just don't mesh. He doesn't like me and I don't like him. For the most part, we can get along and even have fun doing things together with our daughter, but we haven't been intimate in years. We're both in our late 30s, and we re reasonably don't have family to help. Although, once she starts going to school full-time, I believe I will have more options to do something financially productive with my time. Could I ask, when did you realize you didn't mesh? Was it true for your whole relationship and you didn't realize it? Or did you mesh at first, then unmesh later on? We meshed at first, we moved in together and everything was fine, but then he started being brattier and brattier, just an unfun person to be around, complains about the lamest stuff. I get annoyed and start poking at him because I can't tell him to shut the F up. I'm a pretty wound up person and he's carefree about long term things, so that gives me anxiety. He doesn't know how to compromise, he was never taught and his parents never fought because his mom is perfect and always went with her husband's opinion or never said anything to create conflict. So... He fine until you inconvenience him by dis disagreeing with him. He's a mix between a three-year-old and an arrogant 13-year-old boy. Even when planning our wedding, his mom asked me what my preferences were because she knows how bossy and controlling her son can be. But there was no turning back as I was six months pregnant. I know I'm not perfect, but I did try and have come to the conclusion that he's just not an insufferable brat. An example, my mom and dad were renewing their wedding vows a couple of years ago, which happened to coincide with, with Halloween. He told my mom to pick another date for her wedding because he wanted to take our daughter trick-or-treating, something that had never planned for before, and that he wouldn't allow me to go if she kept that date. Example, I missed out on my daughter's first week of life because I had postpartum preeclampsia. While he stayed at the hospital with me to make sure he could say he was there when I died, he never once pulled up a chair next to me and made an effort to help me feel better or raise my spirits. Even the nurse made a snide comment about him being an asshole. I would have gotten out of the hospital sooner had he just left, all he did was complain and stay on his phone. But of course, I'm the bitch because I get mad at the way he treats me. I'm just over it, but being able to be home to take care of my daughter means more to me than anything. She had me convinced everything was either normal or my fault. Then she cheated and is playing the victim because I read some of her messages after I found out she lied. Now it takes a year to divorce where I live, so technically still mar married for a year. Anyone reading this for personal reasons? Just get out. It'll be better once it's all over, man. Just make sure you take a break from everyday life. Work everything. Go somewhere you've never been to get out of the environment and have fun. 
I'm thankfully not in this relationship anymore, but out of fear that he'd do something to hurt himself. He threatened to do it when I first brought up that I wasn't happy in the relationship and he became incredibly manipulative. A lot of people are stuck in a relationship for the same reason and it's just so sad. I'm glad you could get out of it. Yup, mine was crazy manipulative and emotionally emotionally abusive so he completely isolated me and made me feel totally worthless. He often acted like he would kill himself if I seemed like I was going to break up with him. So when I actually did, he made a huge scene, living in his car, calling me to tell me he was driving up north and was going to drive into traffic and it was, of course, all my fault. I had done this. I told him that if he was actually going to hurt himself and or other people, that I'm calling 911. First I called his close friends to see if he was making it up, then I called his parents to let them know what was going on. I told his mom that my next call was to 911 because of the suicide threat and potentially killing other people. And she said, don't you dare do such a thing. If anything bad happens to him in any way, it is your fault. Okay, learned where part of these issues came from right then, lol. Call 911 followed the ping on his phone for two days as he traveled north. Finally, he stopped in a northern city and got a hotel room where police got him. He ended up being sent to a psych ward for two weeks. Where, of course, he called me several times, whispering to let me know how much he hated me and that after he got out, he was coming straight to to over and was going to heal himself and that it was my fault. Fortunately, he never did contact me again. He lives right around the corner for me. For other threats he made too, I tried to get a restraining order, but since he never made any direct threats saying he was going to hurt, kill me specifically, they couldn't do anything to help me. So I was just scared for four months until I moved to a new city, lol. Era, wow, I've never had so many replies before. I appreciate everyone's comments and support. That's really nice. My parents did not love each other, but have stayed together because of children. My parents too. Split up about 10 years ago, 15 years later than they should have. I grew up in a house really without any love. And while I'm fine, it definitely still shows and my parents wasted decades of their lives being unhappy. Yeah, my family was kind of effed up. I saw a lot of shit no person should have to. They wanted to get a divorce and when I was around 11 and my older sibling 12, my parents sat us down to get our thoughts. My sibling told them to divorce, the marriage was dysfunctional. I told them to stay together for myriad reasons. My sibling and I both ended up going to top universities and succeeded professionally. My parents are still together decades later, and they've never been happier. Life can be so strange. I was the one super in love. I don't think he was. Once every four or five months, we'd have some sort of discussion. The last time... It was that he didn't know if what he had was love. I should have seen that as a warning, but I convinced him to stay with me after an hour discussion. I think he felt guilty. I stayed with him through suicide attempts, drug-induced psychosis, and moved countries for him. I imagine he felt an incredible amount of guilt and stayed with me because of that. I think he cared for my well-being, maybe. But he wasn't in love, and it's painfully obvious now that I'm out of the relationship. It just sort of became a habit and when I realized I didn't have the feelings anymore, we had two young children and I didn't want to break up the family. And later when we tried couples therapy, this didn't change anything, but our son was diagnosed with leukemia two years ago. So I felt we had to stay together until he was well. My ex didn't agree and we were divorced this summer. My son is almost through the treatment and is doing fine. I have not been this happy and relaxed in years, and so far the kids, 6 and 9 year olds, have coped well with me moving and when they're staying at my new place. You guys did the right thing, much better for children to have separated, happy parents than than married miserable ones. Glad to hear you're doing well. Edit, for anyone who wants to ask for proof, please read the dozens of responses of anecdotal evidence. There are also a few scientific studies linked that show that while divorce can have negative consequences in the short term, it does not in the long term. 
to people saying that divorce dooms their children to the same fate, staying with someone you clearly don't love does the same thing. Obviously, divorce should be seen as a last resort. I do not know why some people are reading this and thinking I am adv- advocating for divorce in every situation. Get therapy, try to communicate better. But if nothing else works, it is a great last resort. This, 1000 times this, my parents stayed together and it's caused me and my sister a lot of harm. My sister's in therapy and I would be too, except, except I'm an idiot. My boss has been vocal about wanting to leave, but he has kids and no prenup, so he can't afford it. My cousin told me about three hours after he got married that he didn't want to get married, but now he was terrified he would lose his house and basically all his money, alimony plus child support, if they got divorced. I told him that he should have said something three plus hours ago, and he said he couldn't. I then asked him if this was such a big concern to him, why he didn't get a prenup. His exact words to me were, those don't actually exist, they're just made up for movies. They've been married for just over two years now, and I'm pretty sure it's only going to end if she leaves him or one of them dies. Considering he's 26 and she's 23 or 24, it sounds like he's he's in for a long, miserable life. Your cousin is an idiot. I was in a pretty bad relationship when I was younger. I stayed because I thought nobody else would love me. He was incredibly abusive and would remind me all the time that if I left, nobody would ever care about me or love me like he does. I was just so terrified to leave. What if he was right? It's been almost 10 years since that relationship and I'm happy to report that he was wrong. Although it's taken a lot of work to realize that and I still have fleeting moments of doubt. Being in love seems like a state over which you have no control. I long ago made the decision just to love the woman who became my wife. Fortunately, she made the same decision about me. Romantic infatuation has faded, but our love for each other endures. It takes work to maintain, to avoid taking each other for granted. Love is not an emotion, it is a practice. Edit, thank you for the awards. I'm glad I could contribute to making some folks' days a little more hopeful and perhaps inspire a bit more love in the world. I love this. I have been married for 20, 21 years, and this is true. I also think feelings of being in love can come back. For us, it was a matter of our kids being older now, and us finding hobbies we love doing together. Reignited that flame. I'm glad we stuck it out through the hard times. Neither of us experienced attraction, but we still care deeply for each other. He's my best friend. Also, the marriage was mutually beneficial. Edit. Wowza, I did not expect this to blow up. Y'all literally doubled my karma, lol, so thanks for all the positive support. I tried to clarify some things in the comments, but fellow ace-pack people, beware that the incels and gatekeepers do come out a bit. My sister is a massive piece of shit, constantly calls her husband limpy in front of people in reference to his supposed limp dick. Tells him that she wishes he'd get in a car and drive off a cliff. I'm not saying she does this when they are arguing. I mean she does this literally every single day. Not even angry at him. He's been dealing with his bullshit for 20 plus years out of the 30 years they've been together. The reason he does not live here is that she should she would become homeless if he did. She has a bunch of felonies for theft, and identity theft, prescription forgeries, etc. She used to be a nurse, had a decent career. Now she wouldn't be able to get a job anywhere. He knows that if he were to leave her, there's a decent chance she'd die on the streets. Other than him, everyone was, has abandoned her at this point. Just a side note, he's an incredibly honest person. Never steals, does not do drugs, goes to work every single day and works hard. Edit. Here are some text messages between them that their son, my nephew, sent me. I guess his mom sent them to him to show that their father did not deny abusing her. The husband doesn't look great here, but I can't honestly blame him at this point. I spent a couple of years living in their house a while back, and I can say that I never saw the dude get angry, be abusive, or anything else. Maybe she's had enough at this point, he's had enough at this point and is fighting back, not sure. However, in the time I spent living there, 
I had my sister steal everything out of my wallet, sign up for credit cards in my name, watched her abuse him and the kids emotionally nearly every day, etc. Overall, it's just a very sad situation. In my first relationship, I thought I had scored the jackpot. I was young and he was young and jacked and smart. He overglorified himself and I just couldn't see that. I looked up to him as a god mainly because he kept saying I was bad at my studies and cooking and basically everything that I loved to do. I thought I would never get someone better so thus I stayed. I thought I loved him, I thought that that was what love was but I was just proud that I had gotten something so amazing, I was stupid. Loved her dog. I had two dogs with my ex. He was a musician with a part-time minimum wage retail job, so I paid for everything, cleaned up after the dogs, cooked for the dogs on days where he was just too damn lazy to pick up dog food. I knew I wasn't in love with him, but I loved the dogs and didn't feel capable of leaving. I finally left him when I found out he was on Tinder trying to hook up with other girls. First thing he did was post a picture on social media that I took on my camera of him with our dogs. Caption is a long ass paragraph about how difficult it is to raise two dogs all on his own, but he's a dedicated single dog dad. Wow, just wow. You should be able to apply for joint custody. When I was in a relationship with my ex, I liked her, cared for her, been there for her when she needed and gave space if she needed. I don't know if this is love. But she did none in return. She just said yes and that's it. She was only physically attracted to me, I guess. I don't think she ever loved me. She broke up with me for nothing. One day she wanted me out of her life, so I left. As others have said, it is impossible to love someone the same way every day. So it is normal that on some days everything is fine and on other days you are not sure how you feel. You don't know what love is anymore. You feel confused and suffocated. But what really matters is knowing that you are unable to be disloyal or purposely hurt the person you have chosen to be your partner and you know you can count with them when you are well and when you're not. And when you think about the relationship, you know you don't want to be with anyone else. I think the idea we have that love should be all romantic and roses is very wrong. Life is not like that. A relation is hard work. In the end of the day, what matters is to be there for each other. I realized recently that every relationship I've been in, until the current one, had absolutely no love in it. I told myself I loved them, but I was really with every one of them for convenience or because they asked me out and I was scared to say no. The last two ended so horribly I was scared to leave the house for a long time and routinely asked guys at my job to walk me to my car because I heard one of them was looking for me. Met my current significant other online, moved 800 miles away to be with him. It'll be two years in January and we just had a baby girl together. It just took a literal half ton of pain to get to the happy spot. I'm no longer with them, but was with her for eight years. I never loved her, but stayed because of a combination of self-loathing and she relied on me for everything, so I was afraid of what would happen if I left. Also financially, I couldn't live on my own. But I I beat the bullet anyway because I can figure out the rest and staying with her was only stunting her ability to learn how to be an adult. I was with my first boyfriend for almost 11 years. I didn't know exactly when it was I began to fall out of love with him, but I know it was at least at least a year or so before I finally left. I grew up and changed and he didn't. One day I realized I felt more like his mother than his partner and that was the beginning of the end. This article perfectly explains everything I felt. I stayed for a lot of reasons. Fear he would hurt himself if I left. Financial obligations. We own a house together. Still trying to sort that out. We had two cats I thought would be crushed if I left. I had no family of my own and his family was basically all I had. Guilt and shame thinking I was... I just wasn't trying hard enough, thinking I owed him, and convenience. I had a big debt, 
a big bad case of sunk cost fallacy going on. I thought if I just kept hanging on, kept putting in more effort, the spark would come back, but it never did. I'm ashamed of it, but eventually the feelings of frustration and discontent turned into resentment and contempt, and I wasn't as kind to him as I should have been. I resolved so many times to put those negative feelings aside and choose to love him, but they always crept back in. I thought staying without love, but with security and stability would be better than living with nothing at all, but I was wrong about that. I was more miserable than I even was aware, and after I left, I felt so unbelievably free and light and like myself again. I'm sorry for both of us that I didn't leave sooner, because I don't think either of us was truly happy. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel.